Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And as you saw in the thumbnail, this is an unboxing video. We've got a fixed blade. Uh, we've got full size folder. We've got small folders. You know, we've got something for everyone. And I think you're going to like what you've got. I've also got a little announcement. Every month at the start of the month, I do a random draw of my supporters. One of them wins their knife of their choice of the knives that I reviewed in the previous month. The odd time I hold back one knife, I have once held back two. This time I left it open anything that he wanted. I use Google random number generator to pick a number. It's between one and 52 because I've got 52 supporters. Number 25 came up. I looked down the list and it was Mike M from Mike. Anyhow, a Canadian guy and he chose the Trivisa Orion that I reviewed last month. I got it in the red and black with a black wash D2 blade. This is a fairly new brand. Check out the video if you haven't seen it yet. And I think it's a pretty cool choice. A nice like stretched buoy style folding knife. I'm quite happy with that. If you want a chance to win a knife every single month, you can become one of my supporters. Go to patreon.com slash CCE or click the join button right down there. It's just beside the subscribe button if you haven't clicked that one yet too. So I appreciate all the support. It starts off as little as $2 US per month. That's all you need to support me at to get this chance. That's next to nothing. That is cheap. Of course, you can support me with more money every month. That would be great. Uh, some of the stuff that I'm saving some money for is I need to get a new tripod. I need to get another lens for my camera. I'm halfway saved up for that lens already. So there you go. That's what I'm working on in the very short term. I also use the money to buy more knives to review. I don't keep my knives, very few knives that I review, I actually keep, I have to cut. I have to sell almost all of them in order to buy more knives to review. I don't get very many knives given to me. I buy most of them. And then I sell them for at least 30% off of the retail price. And guess what? My supporters get first dibs on that as well. So two good things that you get back for giving me something good. I think it's kind of a fair trade. So I appreciate your support very much. One other thing that I ask, if you're using an ad blocker, I just want you to know it does cost me money because you don't see the advertisements, I don't get paid. I don't get a lot of money from YouTube advertising, but I do get some and I need every bit that I can to support the channel. For those of you who don't know, I haven't mentioned this in a, uh, over a year, probably two years. I live on a disability pension, so funds are very tight at my place. I'm not begging for money, I'm just asking what I deserve. So thank you so much for supporting the channel. You know guys, I dislike advertisements as much as the next guy, which is why I only let one advertisement interruption in any of my videos, right around the five minute mark. And I've been doing that for about a year and a half already, and that's my commitment to you. YouTube wants me to put in three, four, sometimes five advertisement breaks in my videos. I just don't let them do it one. Somewhere around the five minute mark usually. I dislike them so much, but I'm not going to take money away from creators, so I decided to scrap the idea of an ad blocker and I end up paying for YouTube Premium. I don't like paying for YouTube Premium, but I like giving creators what they deserve because creators work hard on making their channels good. At least the good creators do. Each video takes me between eight and ten hours to create. I don't just pull out a knife, talk about it, post the video like some reviewers do. I do a lot of research. I test cut. I use the thing and I do all my own measurements from start to finish. Accurate measurements. A lot of companies don't post accurate measurements on their websites. And a lot of reviewers go, hey, it looks like it's about that size. I think it's this weight. You know, I spend the time. I invest a lot of effort and I do it for you because I think you deserve to know exactly what you're going to be getting if you order a knife that you've seen on my channel. So without any further ado, let's get to the tabletop and take a look at those four knives that we've got today. Let's begin with this Tucson. Yeah, the box is a bit banged up. This is the TS-247. It's the fixed blade. Come on out. We've got a Kydex sheath, a taco style sheath. We've got a little belt clippy thing. This is one thing that I'm not very fond of with Tucson is on their micro knives or mini knives like this. That clip thing is ridiculous. 
it has no retention whatsoever really. So get an Ulti clip or something similar with your little micro knife from Tucson. Uh, the retention on this clip is really good. It holds nice and tight. So otherwise, I'm quite happy with it. You do have the nice three holes there in order to put on a third party clip if you want. This is M390 steel. It's a Wong design. We've got uh, T8 screws holding on the micarta, and I'll take those off in the video. We've got a little lanyard hole back here, and you know, M390 is not bad. It's got, of course, oil on it. Two sun knives always have oil on them, which is a very good thing. And the badging, yeah, it's on the bevel. I don't really like it there. I'd much rather it was on that flat, but this is a cool little knife. It's a three finger grip in my hands, which is quite good. Uh, my hands are just barely in the extra large range, closer to large, but I do need to buy extra large gloves usually, like probably 80% of the time. Just depends on the brand that makes them, right? The fit and finish here seems pretty good. Uh, that micarta is a coarse kind of burlap micarta. We've got not quite a straight back. It's got a very slight drop point and then a high flat grind there. Well, it's not that high because it's such a small knife, right? Fairly chunky steel. I think that's close to an eighth of an inch. I'll do all my testing with this thing and tell you what I think when I finally do the review. Oh, I do like that sharpness soil. It's plenty big enough. Fairly comfortable in hand so far. A little bit of jumping up on the spine. The TS-247. The price on this is $54.99 US. It's out of stock at the moment, but there's a notify me button right about here on every page for a knife from White Mountain Knives, where you can put in your email address, hit that orange notify me button, and you'll get an email when it's back in stock. You can save 10% on everything at White Mountain Knives if you use my coupon code. It's just my letters, CCE, and 10% is a good savings. If you do end up trying to buy something and the coupon code doesn't work, finish the order, email them. Their email address is at the bottom of every page. It's on the screen what their email address is. You email and he will refund you the discount. Isn't that nice? So here we go. The TS-247 M390 and micarta. That's the fixed blade for today. We've got a large folder. We've got a Maguron. This is the Maguron Velona. The Velona comes two ways. We've got G10. And we've got, uh, I think it's 14C28N on this. Yeah, we've got a flipper here. Flat slab G10, uh, inset G10, so the liners are exposed. Backspacer there, right and left pocket clip. There's a lanyard hole, and that's a milled pocket clip. Oh yeah, that thing's got some good spring retention on it. Rounded spine on this blade. Let's take a look at it. Whoa, yes, drop point. Deep fuller all the way on both sides. Yeah, right there it says 14C28N, and that's all the writing that's on the knife and the Maguron logo right there. I like the limited badging. Isn't that nice? The G10 is in quite a ways there. Let's see. Yeah, that's fairly comfortable. I like that. Got a nice chamfer with jimping for the lock release. Yeah, lockup looks quite good. Blade centering looks quite good. I know it's hard to see on an all-black knife. The all-black version is sold out at the moment. Again, you can hit that notify me button. They've got light gray G10 with a satin finish blade, and that is in stock. The price on this is $53.99 before your 10% discount. That makes it $48.59 US. I think that's a pretty good price for this. Now, this is not a black wash. This is a titanium coating on the blade, which I tend not to like so much, but I think at the moment when I bought it, the gray one was sold out, and right now the black one's sold out, you know, because it's been a while ago when I bought these. Uh, I'm finally doing the unboxing. Some of you guys are wondering, how is a Canadian getting these flipper knives into Canada? Well, I have them sent to a friend in Nebraska, extended family, and uh, he then mails them to me in Canada. So if you're a Canadian, 
flipper knives are getting stopped and a lot of other folding locking knives are getting stopped too. They're being called centrifugal. You know, if they can do a whip with the knife like this and have the blade come open, they call that centrifugal. So a lot of knives are getting held at the border. You do have the option. Canada Border Services Agency will let you mail them back to United States or back to any country in the world. They just have a strict set of instructions on how you can do it. Once they've sent you the letter that they've confiscated the knives, there's contact information in there. Email them. If you talk nice to CBSA, they talk nice to you. I've done it many times. And uh, you can have them sent back. Use ups.ca. They accept UPS for shipping knives back. You just have to follow all their little rules for how to send it back. And one little trick about UPS, if you use their online tool, it looks like it's going to cost like a hundred bucks to send some knives back. At the very end, just before you pay, it'll give you a list or a, a, a screen of other options. And one of them will be to ship it by ground. And it's going to be a third as much, you know, 30 bucks or so. We've got two more. We've got something from San Remu SRM knives. This is their modern knives, not their older San Remu knives that they made for the domestic market. You know, the ones with the Asian characters on the, on the knife. You know, this is made for the Western market. It's a 7000 series, the 7415TZ. It also comes in the 7415TE, which has got a light blue anodized titanium. So this is a titanium frame lock. I don't do frame locks an awful lot, but that's what it is. We've got a deep carry clip there, lanyard pin back here, backspacer, nice big holes in the frame here, very light knife. Uh, one thing about uh, San Ren Mew, the numbering system that they use for the knives, the 7000 series means that they've got seven centimeter blade, around seven centimeters. So this thing's going to have about a two and a half inch blade. We've got a flipper there. Let's take a look at it. Woohoo! Were you expecting that kind of Persian style blade? Yeah, it does have some fingerprints on it. And that's because uh, Dave in Nebraska, he takes the knives apart. He mails me the handles and he mails me the blades in separate packages. And then they get through no problem at all. So if you're a Canadian, if you've got friends or family in the United States who can do that for you, that's one way to get your knives across the border. So I reassembled these, put them back in their boxes, and I'm doing the unboxing right now. Not quite as happy as I'd like to be with this one, and that's because it's number two. They put a serial number on there. So this is the second one of these that they made. I'd really love to get number one. I've got a number of San Remu knives, a small number, that are number one, the first example that they put out. This one's number two. And it says right there, 154 CM, model number, SRM there. And then we've got another SRM there. And we've got another SRM there. That's one thing San Remu does. They overbrand. You don't need SRM on a knife three times. And that's just too much. But this frame lock, yeah, it's quite nice. Lockup's good. Alignment's good. Action's good. It's very light. Very light indeed. One thing I do notice, and I'll talk about this on the review, the hole that they cut out for pocket clips tends to be too big. You know, there's a space back there. I don't know why they do that. We've got a lock bar insert as well, because titanium doesn't act very well as a lockup surface. So we've got a mini knife, a small knife, a full-size knife. What else do we have? Well, we've got something else from Tucson again. This time we've got the 277. Now this, uh, oh, by the way, these knives, they're both in stock, the blue and the gray. They're both in stock right now. Uh, the 277, this thing looks funky. I just liked it. We've got gray G10, and then we've got these orange rings in the G10, and then they've got holes cut all the way through. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool. Uh, T8 screws, black ones, lanyard pin back here. It is a one side only pocket clip. It's their budget pocket clip, but there you go. This is one of their budget knives. It's a night morning design, 14C28N blade. It's a flipper. Woof. 
yeah, that detent doesn't feel quite right. Well, I'll double check it. Maybe I over tighten the pivot. But there's the blade. It's a drop point with a full swedge from the end all the way to the tip. 14C28N, again, you know, there's their oil on there still. We've got a forward choil, just barely big enough to use. You know, high flat grind, and it's fairly thin behind the grind, I think. Yeah, at the tip it's a little bit thicker, but I think it's thin enough that this thing's going to perform quite well in my testing. You know, the edges of the handle are rounded everywhere. It's a funky knife. It's a really funky knife. You know, there's a flat pin here, and there's a T8 hole right there inside those uh, spokes, if you will. Yeah. Chamfer on the lock release. Lock up. Yeah, that lock up's very good. Alignment. That's very good. Yeah. Pretty cool, if you ask me. And not too terribly heavy. Let me see where the balance point is. Oh, not bad. Not bad of a balance point. I'd like it just a tiny bit closer to the pivot, but that's okay. This is actually, I think this is going to be a good user. I really do. Very comfortable. I wouldn't mind a left side clip, but very comfortable. Which one of these knives do you like the best? If you got any of these, let us know in the comments what you think of that knife. Uh, which knife do you think you might want to buy? Let us know that in the comments as well. Every comment really does help out the channel. Even if you just leave a comment saying hi for the algorithm, it helps more people to see my videos. Believe it or not, you know, I've got almost 14,000 subscribers and yet most of my videos only get about 500 views. It's very strange to me. I don't understand it. I keep getting emails from people telling me that they found my channel and they love the detail that I go into in my reviews and everything. And then I still only get around 500 views. I just don't understand it. My Instagram videos, I've just started doing some Instagram reels and those things are getting like 2,000 likes. That's just the likes plus all the views that people don't click like on. So if you're interested in shorter videos of mine, something not as long as what I'm doing here. Well, if you like how long this is, if you're still watching this, you like how long my videos are, I guess. But check me out on Instagram as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Huge thank you to my financial supporters. I appreciate it an awful lot. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.